Greetings, and welcome to All Things Physics, where we take an in-depth look at some of the coolest and surprising things the physical world has to offer. Today, I want to talk about a rolling wheel. Specifically, a wheel that rolls without slipping along the ground. Now, you probably don't think of a rolling wheel as being all that exciting. But did you know that at each instant of time, there's a point on the wheel that's not moving at all? That's right. And this is true no matter how fast the wheel is traveling, even if it's traveling 100 miles an hour. Check it out. What you're witnessing here is a slow motion video of a wheel on a car that's traveling at 100 miles an hour. And my goal here today is to convince you that the point on the wheel that's in contact with the ground is at rest. One way to understand this is to realize that the ground itself is at rest. So if the wheel doesn't slip against the ground, then the part of the wheel that's touching the ground must also be at rest. But this explanation, while true, is not entirely satisfying. The problem is that it lacks insight into exactly what's happening with the wheel that leads to this interesting behavior. So to figure out precisely what's going on here, let's take a closer look at a rolling wheel. I'd like to begin by analyzing the slightly simpler situation of a wheel that rotates about its center, shown here in slow motion. The reason for starting with this simpler problem is because the results will be used to help us understand the rolling wheel problem. Notice that if we look at a single frame from this movie, all the dots are sharply in focus. That's because I've used a fast shutter speed that effectively freezes the motion at a single instant of time. Of course, in reality, the wheel moves a small amount while the camera shutter is open, and this leads to something called motion blur. Increasing the amount of time the shutter is open captures larger motions, and this results in more and more blur. For a wheel rotating about its center, we can clearly see that the center dot remains sharply in focus, while the amount of blurring of the other dots depends on their distance from the point of rotation. Neither of these features is terribly surprising. The wheel rotates as a rigid body, so all points undergo the same angular displacement and points that are closer to the center of rotation move a smaller distance than those farther away. In other words, the amount of blurring is related to how fast the points are moving, suggesting that the center dot is not moving at all. In addition, the blurred paths provide direct information about the trajectories of the points. Thus, motion blur allows us to determine both the speed and direction of the points in the image. To make things quantitative, we can use the arc length formula, which tells us that the distance traveled by a point on a rotating wheel is proportional to how far that point is from the center. Dividing by the time interval and taking the appropriate limit leads to a relationship between the tangential speed of a point on the wheel and its distance from the center. In this equation, the rotational or angular speed tells us how much the wheel rotates in a given time interval, while the tangential speed tells us how far a point on the wheel has traveled in that same time interval. This relationship between tangential and angular speeds applies to any rotating object and is therefore quite useful in physics. Although we won't make use of it here, it's worth mentioning that there's a vector version of this formula as well. Returning to the formula we just derived, we can determine the tangential speed of any point on a rotating wheel as long as we know the wheel's rotational speed. We also know that the direction of motion is tangent to the blurred trajectories. Thus, we can combine the speed and direction information to determine the velocity vectors for all points on a rotating wheel. The resulting velocity diagram allows us to easily understand the motion of points on a rotating wheel. As a brief aside, 
Although it appears as though the entire center dot is at rest, this is merely an illusion caused by the circular shape of the dot matching the circular motion of the wheel. In reality, all points on the wheel, including those on the center dot, move in circular motion about the true center of the wheel. It is only the absolute center point, a purely mathematical construct that is truly at rest. Recall that our ultimate goal here is to understand the motion of points on a rolling wheel. Our approach will be to make use of the velocity diagram we just created for a rotating wheel and use it to help us construct an analogous velocity diagram for a rolling wheel. To proceed, note that a rolling wheel can be thought of as a wheel rotating about its center that simultaneously translates in a straight line with a constant speed. And since we already know the velocities for points on a rotating wheel, all we need to do is find the velocities for points on a translating wheel. But that's easy, because every point on a translating wheel has exactly the same velocity. The only difficulty is determining how the translational and rotational speeds are related. In order for a wheel to roll without slipping, the rotational and translational motions must match up just right. So the big question we need to answer is how are the translational and rotational speeds related for a wheel that rolls without slipping? To determine the relationship between translational and rotational motions, consider a wheel with some paint on its edge that rolls without slipping along the ground. In a given time interval, the wheel as a whole moves some distance along the ground. But because the wheel rolls without slipping, this distance will be precisely equal to the length along the wheel's edge that comes into contact with the ground during that same time interval. In other words, the distance traveled by the wheel due solely to translational motion, and the distance traveled by a point on the wheel's periphery due solely to rotational motion will be exactly the same. And because these distances are traversed in the same amount of time, we find that the wheel's translational speed and the speed of points on the wheel's periphery due solely to rotational motion must be the same. This connection between the translational and rotational speeds for a rolling wheel, the so-called rolling without slipping constraint, is precisely what we need to complete our analysis. To find the velocities for points on a rolling wheel, all we need to do is add vectorially the velocities on a rotating wheel with those on a translating wheel, subject to the rolling without slipping constraint. And as we just learned, this constraint requires that the translational speed be equal to the speed of points on the periphery of the rotating wheel. In other words, the lengths of the translational velocity vectors must be the same as the lengths of the vectors on the periphery of the rotating wheel. When we include both translational and rotational motion on the same diagram, we can immediately see that the velocity vectors will cancel for the point at the bottom of the wheel. Therefore, at this instant of time, the point on the wheel that's in contact with the ground is at rest. But notice that we can now understand this lack of motion as a combination of translational and rotational motions, and it is this physical insight that we were hoping to find. In this case, the entire wheel moves to the right with a given translational speed, while the point on the bottom of the wheel simultaneously moves with an equal speed to the left due to the rotational motion. And this cancellation will occur no matter how fast the wheel is moving, even if it's traveling at 100 miles an hour, but only for the point that's in contact with the ground. For the point at the top of the wheel, the velocities due to translational and rotational motions both point in the same direction, so this point will move faster than any other point on the wheel, exactly twice as fast as the translational speed of the wheel as a whole. When we sum the vectors to get the final velocities, we find that the points on a rolling wheel appear to be circling around the point in contact with the ground. To make this more obvious, let's sketch in a series of circles centered on the bottom of the wheel. When we do so, we can see that the velocity vectors are always tangent to these circles. But notice that this is the same thing we observed for a wheel rotating about its center. Of course, 
For the rotating wheel, the velocity vector circled around the center of the wheel because that was the point the wheel is rotating about. But does this mean that a rolling wheel is rotating about the point of contact with the ground? If that were true, then the lengths of the velocity vectors would be proportional to their distance from the contact point. And sure enough, we can check to see that this is indeed the case. We can therefore understand a rolling wheel in two different ways. One way is to view a rolling wheel as simultaneously rotating about its center and translating parallel to the ground, subject to the rolling without slipping constraint. But another way is to view a rolling wheel as undergoing completely rotational motion about the point of contact with the ground, again, subject to the rolling without slipping constraint. Now, it's important to understand that although the point on the wheel that's in contact with the ground is not moving, this is only true for a single instant of time. We say that this point is instantaneously at rest. In addition, as we have just seen, this point acts as the center of rotation for the wheel. That is, all other points on the wheel are instantaneously rotating about this point. Of course, a moment later, there will be a different point on the wheel that's in contact with the ground, and this point will now be at rest, with the wheel instantaneously rotating about this new point. And this will occur over and over again. Therefore, a rolling wheel can be thought of as being in a constant state of rotational motion about the continuously changing point in contact with the ground. Let's now take a look at how our theoretical description compares to an actual rolling wheel. By using a slow shutter speed, we can obtain an image with sufficient blurring to show how the points on the wheel are moving. Notice that the point at the bottom of the wheel is sharply in focus. In addition, the amount of blurring is proportional to the distance from this point, exactly as we surmised. Superimposing the theoretical prediction on top of this image, we see near perfect agreement. Personally, I find it absolutely fascinating that a rolling wheel is instantaneously rotating about the point in contact with the ground. But once you realize this is happening, you can see it play out in an actual rolling wheel. Shown here is a video of a rolling wheel in slow motion. For comparison, on the right I also show this wheel rotating about the point in contact with the ground, which was accomplished using the magic of video editing. As you can see, both the rolling wheel and the rotating wheel do the same dance about the contact point. Of course, the motions are only truly identical at one instant of time, but hopefully this visual aid helps make it clear that a rolling wheel really is instantaneously rotating about the point in contact with the ground. Before ending this video, it's worth going one step further and thinking about what happens to a point on the edge of a rolling wheel when it's no longer in contact with the ground. If we trace out the trajectory of a point on the wheel's periphery as it rolls, we see an interesting path that includes a cusp as the point comes in contact with the ground. This cusp provides yet another way of understanding why the point on a wheel in contact with the ground is at rest. An instant before the cusp, the point is moving down, and an instant after, it's moving up. Thus, the point on a rolling wheel that's in contact with the ground is in the midst of turning around, which requires that it be instantaneously at rest. Going back to the trajectory of a point on the periphery of a rolling wheel, this curious curve is called a cycloid, and it creeps up in many different areas of physics. As one example, a cycloid is the solution to the famed brachistochrone problem, the path along which a particle will slide without friction between two points in the shortest amount of time. The history of this problem is quite fascinating, but that's a story for another day. For now, I want to end this video with a long exposure photograph of an actual rolling wheel with glow-in-the-dark stickers attached to the center and to a point on the edge. Here, you can clearly see the cycloid traced out by a point on the wheel's edge. This image, along with the overlaid animation, 
once again shows the beautiful agreement between the theoretical description and an actual rolling wheel. I'll bet you didn't realize there were so many interesting aspects to something as simple as a rolling wheel. That's one of the things I love about physics. The more you dig, the more there is to learn. If you have any thoughts on this topic, feel free to leave a comment below. And if you want to see more videos like this one, be sure to subscribe. I'm David Jackson, and this is All Things Physics.